Hi friends, I am Dr. Ashish Gupta. I am a consultant in fetal medicine. So today we are going to talk about uh, an entity called as a short femur length. Right. The premise of the fetal medicine is to ascertain what we are seeing at the moment and what we can expect and anticipate in the future also. Okay. So nowadays we, uh, a part of doing the biometry to the fetus, that how the nasal bone and all the limbs are looking around. We also trying. We are also doing the uh, uh, the Dopplers to see for the uteroblastic insufficiency, and uh, how is the blood flow in the umbilical artery, and uh, we also try to look around uh, if there is any risk uh, regarding an skeletal dysplasia in the coming weeks and in the coming months of the pregnancy, right? So whenever we do the uh, anomaly scan. The whole premise and the whole effort is to look around for all the markers for any ploidy, starting from the nasal bone to skin fold thickness to something around equigenic bowel to look around for the kidneys for renal pilectasis and the limb lengths, right? Uh, so, meaning thereby, a short humerus and a short femur, they do stand at a higher risk as far as the markers for a common aneuploidies are concerned, right? And uh, this short femur can also occur with a uteroplacental insufficiency. And for a small, this could be this has been identified to be a strong marker for a small for gestational age uh, fetuses, as well as an skeletal dysplasia, right? And uh, but if you try to look around for the umbilical artery and the uh, and the uterines and if the flow is fine, then probably. Uh, we are able to rule out sort of an uteroplacental insufficiency. We try to measure all the limb uh, bones. And um, so, if we are identifying only um, an element that the femurs are short, and um, so there could be another entity to talk about apart from an skeletal dysplasia. So, I am going to show you one case, and then probably we'll discuss ab uh, about all these things in a greater detail. So, I am <coughs> going to show you one case. So, this is at the anomaly scan. So, we have just started to look around for the nasal bones and which looks absolutely good we see for the transfer cerebellar diameter which is also matching to the gestational age now we see that the femur length is smaller right as compared to the other bones that we have measured by something around one week we try to look around for all the uh, major bones uh, and uh, all the four limbs and um, so we so that we can have a comparison and we are trying to measure the so this is the spine how does it looks like so this is absolutely great this is the foot length so foot length actually should measure to the femur length this is the uterine arteries on the right hand side uh, simultaneously we see it on the left hand side and the uh, umbilical artery so as to identify if there is some element of an uh, uteroplacental insufficiency causing an intrauterine growth restriction this is what we are trying to look around for a clinoductile right and uh, this is the uh, biometry in which the femur only is turning out to be short as compared to the other long bones right so making a diagnosis with short femur length right and uh, so uh, the differential diagnosis could uh, lie between aneuploidies skeletal dysplasias and IUGRs for aneuploidy we try to look around for other markers skeletal dysplasia we try to measure other bones and for IUGR we try to see for the um, dopplers we do have a nomogram how do we follow them up across so uh, the etiology could be very varied okay so a trauma between four to six uh, weeks of gestation vascular insult maternal smoking maternal alcohol exposure uh, we can have some chromosomal abnormalities and aneuploidies we can have a focal femoral hypoplasia, unusual faces. We can have a PFFD, proximal femoral hypoplasia and dysplasias. And um, those IUGRs are very common. This short femur could be a major marker for a small for gestational age babies, SGA babies. So we do have our nomograms. Uh, how do we follow them up? And um, uh, what is the percentile and how much is the weekly um, a sort of an increment in the uh, gain in the millimeter in the length of the femur length so we try to closely follow them up we can offer them an invasive testing so as to look around for any chromosomal aberrations so if they turn out to be normal then it is very very reassuring usually it could be a normal variation in, in almost two third of the cases but all these things they need to be ruled out and uh, to say that it is a normal variant it is just a retrospective diagnosis and a diagnosis in hindsight
right so uh, a battery of tests or investigations and serial ultrasounds are of paramount importance so as to reach to a diagnosis so as to counsel the parents what exactly they are dealing with right thank you very much for your patient listening